Hi everyone, we're back again, altitude scale modeling. Just got this in from Hong Kong. The AFV Club U2A Dragon Lady High Altitude Reconnaissance Aircraft. Used to seeing this in black, not silver and red. But that doesn't mean it's not going to be beautiful. Looks like getting ready for takeoff when the wheels came off. I'm sure that's what happened. So, brand new airframe, high precision engraved lines, I knew your doors can be selected open or closed. Sorry. Sorry about that. Uh, air brake selected open or closed, accurate cockpit, Trime, Trogon, Type A2 camera, U2 ejection seat, Camera can be displayed independently. Some pictures built up. You've got a wind um, sun shield for the crew. There's the cockpit. There's the landing gear and the camera bay. And two detachable pogo legs. And then the stands to hold the wings up. And some more pictures of it. Looking good. If you're like me, I'm bringing the glare on. If you're like me, you built the old testers kit many moons ago. Many, many, many moons ago. One, two. Three, four, five, six, seven sprues, one clear sprue. Decals, instructions. Here's some AFE Club stuff on the bottom of the box. I have some of those. I have this one. And. Uh, that might be all I have. Alright. Let's get this party started. Let's start. The fuselage, shall we? All right, it's got the correct U2 shape. Excuse me, things just got all moved. Wonky on me. All right, correct U2 shape. Good looking panel lines, rivets, seem like they're in the, all the appropriate places. Your doors, your intakes, air brake detail. Uh, no detail inside. We want a sort of a sander over those ejection pin marks. There's none on the insides of any of these intake parts, which is good. So, there you go. Looking good. Good rivet detail, good panel line detail, good air brake detail. So far, it's already better than the old Testers 48 scale, on which I still have one in my stash, buried in the back of my stash somewhere. So I won't be getting it out anytime soon to do a comparison. You know this aircraft, you know it's got really long wings. These look like two matching sprues here. Oh look, they are. They're folded over in a bag together. A nice touch. <clears throat> wings. Posable flaps and ailerons. It's even got the ridge detail here where the flaps go. Again, good panel line detail, good rivet detail. Good air brake detail. I'm assuming these are the air brake doors. The uh, flaps themselves, this fits inside of there so you won't have any edge seam lines. You'll just worry about these parts here. One piece elevators, tail wings. 
Yeah, same thing this part here for the aileron connects right there. So you'll have an edge there and then some along there. <clears throat> so. You can see how good and detailed the panel lines and rivets are. And like that, I said, that sawtooth type edge. Might be a little flash right there. Figure that when I get it apart. <clears throat> Same on the flaps. Good detail. Rivet. Panel line detail. Good sawtooth edge there. There's where those two parts go together. There's the elevators. Elevator. Remember, this is a matching sprue. There's two of these. It's got those long, skinny wings, which is why it had those removable legs to keep the wings from touching the ground on takeoff. Plus, it had bicycle landing gear, not tricycle landing gear. Ooh, loose part. So we got a loose part. This looks like stop that. the engine nozzle. Nothing to really speak home about. One piece. No interior detail, as far as I can tell. No, nope, no interior detail. I'm pretty sure this is, we know it wasn't a bomber. Oh, this is the sunshade. And the, there's the turbine. Sunshade's got some nice details. Gonna take weathering nice. I'm guessing these are landing gear bay doors. Landing gear itself. Struts. These are the stands to hold the wings up. These are the wheel hubs, I'm guessing. Wheel hubs, bulkheads, some of the exterior antennas, and the under panels, maybe the landing gear door. There's the sunshade. Some more antennas, camera bay, there's a first stage compressor blade, even the underside of the sunshade doesn't have ejector pin marks. This looks like it's got some of those big sticky up ones we've been talking about a lot lately. And then the nozzle for the engine, which went right here. Came right off. And let's look at some cockpit detail and ejector seats, shall we? All right. Nice instruments of detail in the cockpit. Rudder pedals are down there. Control stick. Coming. Um, I'm guessing. This is the throttle and this is the control stick. Guessing. I may be wrong. Looks like ejector pull for the ejector seat. Good detail on the back of the ejector seat. This is a cockpit tub and this is where it goes into. Again, it's got these big sprue ejector pin points there. I'm assuming you remove those, but I'm not going to in case they're needed to stand it up. So, back of the ejector seat, sides. Really good detail. You won't need an aftermarket one for that. It sits right on there. There's the instrument panel. 3D, headboard may come out with one, but you may want to keep it 3D. Control sticks, a few little bits and bobs, I don't know where they go. There's the underside. Nice and detailed. And this one has, looks like the camera. Some other parts, I'm not sure what they are. I'm thinking this is the camera. And then just some other parts, I don't know what they are. So it must be multiple cameras, of course there are, it's a spy plane. 
And those may be frames for the camera, camera mount. Won't know until I see the instruction. But again, good detail on all the parts. No ejector pins in any of the wrong places. That's always a plus. And last colored sprue. With the wheels. Landing your bay doors. <clears throat> I'm assuming landing your bays as well. Struts for the wheels. Front and back. Like I said, it's got two front wheels, two back wheels in a line. And I'm guessing these. I'm done guessing. Look at the directions. But these doors are really good. No seams inside or out. No ejector pin marks inside or out. Um, maybe a tiny bit of burring on the landing gear struts. There's the backs of the wheels. One of those big ejector pin parts. You can see a little bit of burring on those. Around here inside the landing gear doors. Looks good. And then the wheels and the brake hubs. Uh, brake calipers. Looks good. Then we got some clear parts. Which, considering you're supposed to be using taking pictures, they better be great. And maybe a fee club's got a reputation for good parts, so. Canopy, raised frame, nice detail. It's the front windscreen and the canopy. And I'm guessing camera lenses and then wing lights and tail lights. Uh, I'm not sure what this part is. And then you've got your bays for taking pictures, your camera bays. And again, amazingly clear. Beautifully crystal clear. Wonderful clear parts. Protect them well. And uh, decals. Be nice if this was a self sealing bag, but it's not. So, let's carefully. These are ejection seat decals. And then these are all the decals for the aircraft. I don't know how many versions there are. But they are beautiful. They're printed in Taiwan, so they're not cartograph. But they look really good. Smell really good. I wonder if we can register. You're going to see. Here's where your problem is going to be. And it may or may not be a problem, but this is all decal film inside. Oh, inside, all decal film. Oh, you can see that. Same with the letters there. All decal film. So, either cut them out individually and line them up, or use a lot of good decal solution. Two different ones, two different U.S. Air Force. I don't know if it's my eyes or what, but the bottom one that's outlined looks blurry, but I don't know if it does on camera. I have to check the playback. Anyway, good looking decals, except for all that decal film. Maybe you just want to paint those on there the lettering. Some of you really good modelers will even want to paint the lettering. All right, and instructions. There is a bunch about the airplane if you want to pause it and read it. We all know Gary Powers went down in one of these.
And there's the rest of about the airplane in English. And then it looks like Japanese or Chinese or both. Color callouts are GSI, which is Mr. Hobby Color and Mr. Color Spray. And looks like Aqueous. And then Humbro Ravel Knife Color. Start with the ejector seat. And it's going to tell you colors, not call outs, which is good. You don't have to worry about numbers. Putting all the parts in for flight mode. Do not do step two. That's interesting. Uh, I didn't see the instrument panel. Look at my sprue map here. EFD. D. Let's see. Instrument panel is H three. Instrument panels right here on the clear parts. I didn't even notice. Boy, that's not very observant of me. There's any instrument decals. Nope. So, there's all the instrument parts. Bring the whole cockpit together. Here is the camera system. Three cameras that I showed you. How to paint it up. Apply some decals to it. Here's the stand if you want to keep it outside of the vehicle. Uh, front landing gear. And the bay. For flight models, skip the landing gear. Intakes going into the first stage compressor, bulkheads going in, and a cockpit, cameras if you're going to put them in, front landing gear, rear landing gear, which is basically a tail wheel. Fuselage halves together. Um, A12 parts need to be drilled, so there's drilling marks there where you need to drill some parts. Putting in your intakes, combing, camera bay windows, landing gear, or another camera bay, flight mode you close it up, wheels, again flight mode, pay attention if you're doing in flight or not, I'll be doing not, lots of antennas go on this thing, some more clear parts, air brakes open or closed, Three positions you can choose for this mirror, side, upper side, wings, elevators, flaps positionable, up or down, painting H10 clear red, painting H10 on the other side clear green, of course. Wings going on, there's the sunshade, put them together. So you need to cut out what? Cut out this on a piece of paper for I guess it's to make it look like a bracket for holding this wrap in the sunshade around. And Air Force Flight Test Center, Air Force Base, 1960. Beautiful silver, red, yellow. And National Advisory Committee, 1958. And Strategic Reconnaissance Wing, Laughlin, 1959. They're all silver. And Laughlin 
doesn't say what year this one is. So you got four schemes. And here's your little order form if you're missing or breaking some parts. There you have it. AFB Club's beautiful new U2 Dragon Lady. It's nice to see a kit we haven't seen in 48 being remolded, new tooled, engineered. I just wish someone would do that with the SU-25 and 48, the B-17 and 48, the B-25 and 48, uh, the B-24 and 48, the B-29 and 48. New tools, they need new tools. But this is a good start. A unique aircraft that not a lot of us have built. And the ones that have built it, built the testers kit. So, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you can get out and build yourself some nice stuff. I like the inside of AFV Club boxes because it shows some of their other kits in color and some of their egg planes in color and some more of their aircraft in color and some more. I think I don't have the Sabres. I have all the F5s. I have the IDF1s. I don't have any of the egg plane ones yet. I have the MiG-28 and all the F-5s and some of the F-20s. Very nice. Thanks for watching. Sit your ass at the bench and start building yourself a model. Gosh darn it. Hold on a second. Wing wheels. Wing wheels, wing wheels, wing wheels, wing wheels. There we are, wing wheels. So those weren't hubs, those are actual wing wheels. You can either put them on or not put them on, because you can use the stands as well. All right, sorry about that. Thanks for watching. Sit down, build a model, make yourself happy.